We hope this is the last we've seen of these movies, but we have a bad feeling they could be back for more someday. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 successful bad movies that may get sequels. For this list, we're taking a look at movies that mostly received a negative reception, but due to being a hit at the box office or with general audiences, may have a chance of seeing their stories continue in the future. We'll also be taking into account movies that are in early stages of production, because it's still up in the air whether those will ever see the light of day. Number 10. Baywatch. This was a bad idea. Stop being a baby. A reimagining of the classic television series starring David the Hoff Hasselhoff, Baywatch looked to modernize the concept, but completely lost all the charm in the process. Oh my god, you got your mouth. You're gonna get us caught. I'm laying on a dead old lady. Well, she's not gonna bite you for Christ's sakes. Will you shut up? While Dwayne Johnson and Zac Efron do seem to be enjoying themselves, the film is bogged down with a barrage of generic humor that falls back on the tired premises of sex or drinking in modern comedies. What are you guys standing around for? Let's do some shit! In simpler terms, it was all style and no substance, but it still managed to recuperate its budget at the box office, and a planned sequel is in talks to be set in an undisclosed international locale. Well, here's to more slow-mo running on the beach. Number 9. Truth or Dare Carter said, tell the truth or you die. Do the dare or you die. In true Blumhouse Productions fashion of picking a subject and adding the what-if scenario of what if this was haunted, Truth or Dare is about as dumb a concept as one could imagine for a supernatural horror flick. We found this old church and we decided to party in it, and my roommate wanted to play Truth or Dare, so we did. But when we got home, it, the game it just it kept going. It slowly devolves into more of a comedy than a spook fest, so perhaps audiences were intrigued by the unintentional hilarity of it all, helping it rake in close to $100 million worldwide. How is this possible? I wish I knew. Combine that colossal amount of cash with its minuscule $3.5 million budget, and that is a good deal of profit to be had. In fact, in February 2020, Blumhouse Productions did tease that Truth or Dare 2 was in early stages of development. Truth or Dare! Truth or Dare! Number 8. Triple X – Return of Xander Cage Xander Cage? Holy shit! After a forgettable sequel starring Ice Cube bombed in 2005, Vin Diesel finally made a return to the franchise in 2017 with great results. In the financial sense, anyway. Despite Diesel's return, this installment was plagued by an overwhelming sense of boredom and a lack of new ideas. Take your time. I know mouth to mouth if necessary. <laughs> wow. Wow. Domestic audiences didn't seem all that keen on the return of Mr. Cage, but foreign audiences, on the other hand, were a completely different story, amassing an absolutely massive $300 million alone for this mediocre action thriller. With results like that, Xander Cage could return again. And again, and again. I, I get started and then I can't stop and then I can't. Breathe. Number 7. The Cloverfield Paradox So we're hoping that the piece of equipment you found in someone's stomach is what's going to save the day. Good luck, everybody. The Cloverfield series had been taking an interesting spin on what the concept of a sequel is with 10 Cloverfield Lane, a follow-up loosely connected to the original, but telling a new story in the same world, allowing for fresh perspectives and ideas. Anyone ever seen anything like that before? Right? Where's my arm? Understandably, this third film was generating a good deal of hype, only to completely implode on itself with a narrative chock full of coincidences, goofiness, and implausible sci-fi mumbo-jumbo. I think my arm's trying to write something. Somebody get a pen. With a decent viewership count on its Netflix exclusive release, and with producer J.J. Abrams still showing interest in the franchise, we suspect more extraterrestrial shenanigans could come in the future. Oh, my arm helped us find the Earth! <laughs> <laughs> Number 6. Rambo – Last Blood You'd think that with a movie title like this, Stallone would want to end this franchise of films with a fittingly titled Last Blood. Why is it done? How is it ever done? Based on how confusing the titling standards have been for the rest of the series, though, we wouldn't be surprised if there were ten more after this one. Well, maybe he's changed. Men like that don't change, it only gets worse. This new installment, which came out in 2019, was panned by critics, who thought the film was a much more dumbed-down version of what the franchise is capable of, and overusing racial stereotypes to characterize the film's villains. Can't be that simple. It is. 
Number five, Justice League. He's not all right. Criticized for its overuse of CGI, awful villain, and by-the-number script, Justice League hoped to make up for this with success at the box office, but unfortunately, it currently sits as the lowest-grossing film in the DCEU, against a whopping $300 million budget. You won't let me live. You won't let me die. So what chance is there for these characters to unite once more? Wonder Woman was hugely praised, so with some tinkering, a new team could be formed for a superior sequel. Please don't make me do this. While DC has moved on to higher critical success with standalone movies like Shazam and Joker, the outpouring of fans demanding the release of the Snyder Cut may just be enough to bring a sequel to the big screen eventually, too. Please. Please. Just go. Number four, The Boss Baby. What? That cookie down. Cookies are for closers. Oscar nomination for Best Animated Feature? Seriously, why? The path to success is not a straight line, Templeton, but rather a wild ride, like a ship at sea. That kind of acclaim and a hugely successful run at the box office leaves the door wide open for future installments in this new franchise. There is additionally a popular television series playing as we speak, so interest among young viewers is still alive and well. well where's HR when you need him? Art is subjective and all that, but in 2017 alone, there were a variety of vastly superior animated films more deserving of sequels. Do the math, kid. There's only so much love to go around. Unfortunately, we can't have nice things. And as mentioned, money talks in Hollywood, so this baby could be the boss for years to come. <laughs> Nothing can stop me! <laughs> Number three, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. How would you like to die, pirate? Hanging, firing squad, or a new invention, the guillotine? Guillotine? Sounds French. This swashbuckling adventure series has been sailing a slowly sinking ship for the past decade. After At World's End wrapped up the original trilogy back in 2007, every new Pirates film that follows is further proof of a formula becoming more and more tired. I'm sorry, Jack but we've reached the end of the horizon. The fifth film in particular had a myriad of pacing issues, uninteresting plot lines, and new characters as dull as a rusty sword. Even Jack Sparrow's theatrics weren't as funny as they used to be. Could someone explain to me as to why I'm here? Although not acquiring nearly as much treasure at the box office as prior installments, it still made just enough that Disney is still interested in another voyage. Do we even have a ship? A crew? Pants? A great pirate does not require such intricacies. Number two, the Emoji Movie. I came up here to, to defend myself, but you seem pretty happy. So, good news? Okay, suddenly the boss baby doesn't look so bad. The Emoji Movie is a laundry list of everything that could possibly be wrong with a film. Shall we check just a few of these elements? A studio pandering to a popular trend that has no place in being a full-length feature. I gotta be mad. I gotta be mad. A horrendous amount of product placement, and the biggest sin of all, having the legendary Patrick Stewart portray an actual piece of poo. I know it was an accident. We all have accidents. Somehow, though, defying all logic and odds, this blatant cash grab got people to buy tickets, making more than double its budget at the worldwide box office. We live in dread that these emojis could be here to stay. Any last words? Meh. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Bright. I think we might be in a prophecy. We're not in a prophecy. This Will Smith buddy cop film had an admittedly cool premise, but unfortunately became lost in its own ambition. Suffering from juggling too many different ideas, themes, and genres all at once, it culminated into a muddled and absurdly bad experience. You, you think like shit. Can you sit back? Thank you. Despite its critical bashing, though, audiences disagreed, spouting nothing but praise for the film, with positive scores such as an 83% audience rating on Rotten Tomatoes and being one of the most streamed movies on Netflix. They don't teach that at the Academy. No, they do not. With interest like this, Netflix was quick to show interest in greenlighting a sequel. 
And that's when the stupid shit's gonna start. But with Will Smith's work schedule being so hectic these days, production seems to be in a state of limbo. No oh, shit. Well, that can't be good. Yeah. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.